Hi, I'm Natalie Kolbeck and I'm here for Creative Jumpstart and I'm having a wonderful chat today with my friend Rika Coversin. I don't know if I'd sell her, say her name right, but she will tell us later. I know Rika for a couple of years. I'm super excited that she's part of Creative Jumpstart 2019. That's our first time, but it's going to be an awesome time. I already saw her video and I can't wait to share it with you when in January or the videos go up. So um, Rika is joining us with a big time difference because seven hours later in Finland right now. So um, Rika, tell us a little bit about yourself and hi. <laughs> hi. Yeah, I'm so honored to be a part of the Creative Jumpstart this year. It's kind of a dream come true because <laughs> I've oh, like watch it and lo, like I got the letter. Yay. So yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Reika Kovacin, and I know it's a bit hard in, like, not a common name, well, here in Finland, but I actually need to spell my last name even to people in Finland, so <laughs> that's the deal. And my blog is called Paperilitin, I just have to show that I have actually tattooed that one in my arm, so it's a big part of my life, even though I work for full time. So paper, so it's actually translated, uh, it means paperclip. Yes. I didn't paper. know that. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. That is fun. How cool. Yeah. When I was tar starting my blog, I started blogging in Finnish and I started thinking about the name and the paperclip in Finnish consists of two words, paper and to add. So I thought that would be a kind of nice thing because back then I only did paper layouts so it was adding paper layers so I thought I was really clever <laughs> no I really like it and it's also funny that you also started uh, blogging in uh, Finnish I did the same thing not in Finnish though I, because that's one of the hardest <laughs> languages to learn but I did I, don't you guys have like 14 cases or something like insane more than Latin yeah well I don't know I once looked at like Finnish for foreigners book and there was this simple rule just like a little box because normally there's a couple but that was a simple rule and then I guess next six like or seven spreads were exceptions to that rule so <laughs> there's really simple rules but none of the verbs are <laughs> were so, so yeah i started blogging back in the days probably like i don't know 14 years or longer ago also in german and then i switched i think for a while then i did both languages and then i i, I totally gave up and i only did it in uh english which makes it way easier, although it's sometimes sad because, of course, when you come from a country, um, some people, you know, uh, I hate to break it to you, Australians and Americans and English people, some people just don't speak your language, which is, which is fine too. And then that's a little bit tough, right? Were you, how did you make the decision to switch? Uh, well, it was same for me. I started with Finnish, then I did two languages, for some time and that was the hardest part because well it took twice as long but then because all my teams started to be um, like English speaking not American perhaps but English speaking anyway so it was easier to kind of transition to English and by, by that time I realized that over half of my readers were from America anyway so it was kind of natural decisions and, and nowadays Finnish people either they use Google Translator or then they know the language because well it's kind of united the world the crafting world so it's so common it's pretty yeah. amazing when you think about it how that language kind of like ties people from all over the world together uh, this creative jumpstart we have uh, you from Finland we have the Netherlands we have Norway we have the United States of course we have um, Germany we do have Australia I'm forgetting I'm sure I forget some country somewhere please please I'm sorry <laughs> but like it's pretty amazing when you think about it that something collaborative like this can be done 
all over the world and that um, we can share all of our stuff in an online workshop. So Rika, tell us a little bit about your, um, actually what you do when you craft an art. What are your main things that you do nowadays that you love to create? Well, I do layouts even still, but my passion is kind of mixed media, layered projects, kind of canvas or art to alter it all. That's, that's my main <laughs> thing. But I do like to do layouts, especially kind of document something for my kids. Mm -hmm. but, but what really, really is my goal and what makes me tick is to make something alter it or like get my uh, fingers painty or covered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always sticking my fingers to every jar and then maybe later I noticed that that wasn't a smart decision. So don't do it like I do. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the fun of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then comes the reality check, like you end up something in your fingers and you can't remove it with soap and water. And then you're like, hmm, I have a work day tomorrow. But... Usually that works some. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Rika, what is um, so we, so this year's theme for Creative Jumpstart is my home is my castle. Every year we have a different theme for those of you who don't know. So every year we have a different theme which I send out to the artists, and they don't get like a like a big. It's um, you know oh you can only do this and this and this. I mean there are some restrictions like. You can only have a video that's about 10 minutes long because we want to make it easier for those of you who don't have time uh, during the day or not as much time. Anyway, um, so it's 10 minutes, you get the theme, and that's pretty much it. You guys are, can interpret it as you want it. Um, and I love, I love, I recently, maybe because I was moving from Germany to the United States and I'm going back and forth and also because of other things, I'm thinking about this term of what home means. What does home mean to you, Rika? Well, it's my safe place or safe haven because I'm also the place where I create. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally I teach classes or then I'm a participant in a class and actually then I'm doing art in some other place or crafts. But the main place is my home and kind of actually you now thinking of it, my craft room is actually this place, which is our living room. So it's smack center of our apartment. So mm -hmm. it's kind of, even even in a way, it's kind of a heart of our home, my <laughs> my craft table, because I can see all around me. Like kids can play in their own room and my husband is doing music in the other room and still I'm kind of knowing what everybody does. So that that's like my safe place and sanctuary in a way. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, it's very interesting to ask everyone what their what a home means to them because there is there's there is something that we all have kind of in common but then it's also a different um, and it's just I think we actually don't really think too much what that actually means. Um, yeah. Because we are all like we have a home. We don't really have to think most of us We don't really have to think about it uh, Unless something horrible happens or whatever or you have to move or whatever uh, And then you all of a sudden think about what does home I actually mean, right? So but it's interesting how how different things are and it has a lot of to do with safety and uh, where people are uh, but also a lot of people say it's just them like where they are happy, like where are happy, and it doesn't yeah. have to do anything with our location. So uh, it's quite interesting to see. So um, Rika, you mentioned your children. Uh, how old are they? Uh, the older one is turning ten next year, beginning of next year, and the little one is soon eight. The little one. <laughs> Well, she's my baby. <laughs> so do you craft with your children or make art with your children? Do you incorporate them in your creative processes? Uh, occasionally. They do enjoy. For example, just a week ago or something, I did a layout where my kid or she points out an embossing powder I'm going to use in the layout. And she 
enjoyed that little bit so tremendously. And sometimes I let them write the journaling, but the big projects, like the canvas ones, they're like all mine. Naturally, they contribute in another way, like if they have felt pens that are tried out or broken toys or something, they usually bring them to me and then they get <laughs> <laughs> In gel medium and it made, made us a canvas or something. But um, Christmas cards is probably the kind of every year tradition that we do together. And I know you make really, really beautiful Christmas cards because I get almost every year a Christmas card from Rika and I feel so bad because I, I'm such a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, they are beautiful. Definitely. I love them. <laughs> Thank you, Rika. <laughs> so Rika, and now that you um, also listen to uh, special music, not special as in, you know, weird or anything, but like special for some people. I like, I like, uh, not as the same music, but I like alternative music, grungy music, but what kind of music do you really like to listen to? I'm a heavy metal girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, I'm from Finland, so I'm a kind of stereotype because there's uh, like... No, you do say. <laughs> yeah, there's the biggest amount of metal bands in Finland per capita. So there's like a metal band in every street corner, but there's like one, one band in particular that's really important to me because of their lyrics as well so somehow somehow their music speaks to me well there's a couple but this one band is like the thing <laughs> so if someone would say like everything what people might have in mind when they think of stereotypical heavy metal do you feel that is somehow reflected in your artwork and or in your home too mm. Well, not as much. Maybe, well, I do like black gesso, but so does many people because it's wonderful. <laughs> but maybe that that would be the thing. And, well, I only wear black, but it's kind of, well, it's kind of a safety shell, but also it slims me. So, <laughs> but not, our home is decorated in black and white. But, so basic kind of Nordic thing. And maybe because my husband nowadays listens to alternate and really kind of cutting, cutting edge in a way or different, different music. So it doesn't show that much. So you're not like having, uh, I don't know what people think of heavy metal people. I don't know, like bull's horns and <laughs> stuff on the, <laughs> nope. Nope. but I do see on your shelves. I do see this like kind of more darker and grungy um, style. So, it's, but I know when I look at your uh, creations, it's not all dark. You you do you do use a lot of bright colors too. Um, yeah, I'm kind of all over because I like black just so how it makes the colors sing. Well, on top and if, uh, like the metallic shine that's really right in on top of black. There we go, it's metal shine because, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, metal, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I also do white projects, flowery, like this kind of romantic stuff. Yeah. And then every now and then I'm really drawn to color. So I guess it's, it's uh, hint, hint, it's like my project for the Creative Jumpstart. Yeah, it is actually very, very colorful. Yeah. Yes. So you'd be surprised if you think differently and all that you know that she listens to metal and likes to wear black. <laughs> yeah, not, not all black, like, not, not Rothko Ro black, just black player. Right. <laughs> well, that was, I always loved seeing that because um, there is, uh, of course, a Rothko and then also, uh, what's his name, Stellar. Um, they did like black paintings, but when you actually stand in front of them in real life, you realize black is not black. There yeah. is like all these graduations of black, but then also depending on how long you stand there or when you look at it, it become it gets to other colors as well, like purple. Um, it's yeah. a very it's a very interesting color. Um, 
I love black and I used to wear black uh, all, only all the time, um, which changed a little bit more when I started doing um, mixed media. And I think it became kind of like, I don't know, uh, as you said, sometimes it's like a protection shell. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, you just put something black on and you always know that that will work. Uh, and I have been getting more uh, into pattern and colors definitely through uh, art, which is interesting. I think that that can change too. So Rika, um, you always have these like really cool mixtures and um, stuff that you put in your um, work that are like embellishments and found objects like bits and pieces um so you hinted that sometimes your kids bring you stuff which i find so cool but like what are your sources besides maybe your kids where you find all these interesting bits and pieces for making art uh well for number one is actually my family because i've tra trained them <laughs> so my kids bring me stuff and also my husband because he makes some instruments himself so i get all these really cool ephemera from him but then recycling centers they you go are, to recycling centers that's cool yeah yeah they are a treasure chest even when i travel because we were a couple of summers ago we were in estonia mm -hmm. i've checked where the recycling center was in Tallinn. so we went there and my husband was getting all bored so he just said what do you need and <laughs> started like getting the stuff for me but that was the best one I've visited so far because in Finland they have this craft sections where they actually have put like mm, puzzle pieces or something that they know that can be used as a jewelry item or making something they have this section okay. and well they are not pricey but they are pricier than for example in Tallinn where it was like I got a huge box of everything and I still have something in my treasure chest but it was just crazy they had all scissors because I have a thing for scissors and spoons and lace like this hand crochet lace yeah. which you don't get around Helsinki at least or, or if you get it you have to pay a big money for that yeah. but yeah recycling centers are my my number one go-to. So is a recycling center, when you say recycling center, because I'm thinking of like Germany, where you go and you bring your old mattress and your like all your stuff. So is that what it is in Finland too? Or is that a, like an antique or junkyard kind of like? It, junkyard kind of thing, because uh, they're all the items that are in the recycling center are good to be used. Ah. For example, there's... If, if there should be a mattress, and usually there isn't, but if there is, then it's really good quality or is has still the like plastic on. Yeah. And they have old furniture and books and then like these bits and bobs, like li little pieces. They have kitchen supplies and everything. And it's reasonable priced because it's used, but it's still in working condition. And there's not like garbage or anything that's broken or cannot be used what's and your what? favorite thing that you found there do you Ooh, have that's... one you can point out Ooh, bad one <laughs> uh, actually yeah uh it's um i have no idea what's that called in english but uh the kitchen sink that has has the little kind of Thing that gets all the food that it doesn't go down the drain. I think that's, it's called. Uh, oh, you mean like that? Just a, the, just a. Is it one that is a machine or one that's just like the thing that's in there to catch it, like a catch it, like yeah. a little basket kind of thing yeah. or holes. Yeah, that part. I and still have because I haven't used it because I cherish it so much because I think it's really beautiful, like this little basket style shape with. Yeah. The but yeah, I know I'm weird. No, it sounds cool. Is it an old an old one? Yeah, yeah, there's well, it's stainless steel, so naturally there's not ro not rust, but it looks like it's been used. So maybe in a kind of garage sink or something, so it has the kind of life to it. So 
yeah, that's my unnaturally scissors. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> yeah. I have like maybe 12 pairs of scissors in my stash at the moment. So when you look at old scissors that you collect, are they... Is there something special that you look for? Is it size? Is it age? Is it patina? What what makes you drive to, oh, this is a pair of scissors that I want to buy? Uh, first is the material, naturally. So it's all, they are all metal. Even though I'm from Finland and this course, I'm from Finland, like the orange scissors. No, not no orange, just metal. <laughs> the old, old ones or even new ones that look old. And then naturally the patina. Yeah. But kind of the story has a story, sorry. So that the item has a story. Yeah. So it's been used and you can see kind of the worn thing that it, it's been used and it's not brand new and it has a story of its own. That's that's kind of my happy moment when I saw something like that. That is really cool because um, I do love old stuff because of their stories, but I've never really thought about, you know, of course that scissors have a story too, that someone used to make something with them and um, that that is like something that someone had very close to their hands. And a lot of scissors, I mean, not a lot of scissors, but like someone who um, is like really into a certain artisanal or handy stuff um they really cherish their uh scissors right like someone who's yeah. a uh a seamstress or uh i don't know there's all kinds of like someone who's a shoemaker or lev works with lever there's a, all these like kind of special scissors of course and they that's a special tool right so yeah for like uh People who make clothes or the tailors, they are a huge difference how they feel to your hand and the width of the blade and, well, naturally how sharp they are. So, yeah. It, and the basic shape of scissors is also so beautiful. I, not like the one, but scissors, not a scissor, <laughs> the half, but the, and also the functionality because it's so basic. There's just one hinge or screw. Yeah. Then you can work them. Now, uh, even though I always incorporate the scissors kind of in rest, they are never open. But in the, well, I guess it's shot. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That is a cool idea. And then I think like there's something humanly about it too, because it's like two legs and I don't know, it's like arms and. I get, yeah. you know, like, I am I love these animated, like, videos and um, when scissors are, like, going around in the videos, yeah, or that, it's kind of fun. It's, like, it's there, the, it all, it already is fun and it's also fun to use them, if you know how to use them. So, Rika, that was super fun um, to chat with you. Go and sign up for Creative Jumpstart. Sign up through uh, Rika's link. Um, she would appreciate that. And yeah, see you soon. Can't wait to show her video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>